Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, sound check, screen share check. All good. Okay. All good. All righty. Um, a few minutes late, so let's just jump right into our quick check-ins. Um, I'm doing good here. That's a picture of the Missouri River at dawn, um, overlooking the place where Colonel Henry Leavenworth crossed the Missouri to establish Fort Leavenworth back in the day, complete with uh, smoothbore cannon, you know, a force for persuasion. Hamad, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. Um, enjoying the company of the little one, um, having a lazy Sunday. Very good. So yeah, nothing to complain about. All Excited good. about the weekend. All good. Chun Long, how are you, sir? Yeah, very well, thank you. Uh -huh. And Greg, what's going on? Oh, it's early. I didn't get him any sleep, but I'm excited to be here. Yeah. We need to change your life priorities. That's what I'm thinking. Damien, yes, how, are we doing? how are we I, doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you for asking. Good to hear. And is that Brian? Yep. Brian, how are we doing? Oh, it's Lou. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. This could be twin sons of different mothers. <laughs> Well, uh, Hamad's question was, uh, how do you use the 30-minute time frame and potentially the daily time frame to guide trading on the three-minute time frame? So what I'm going to show is a, uh, there's a, there's a lesson and a couple examples of this technique uh, in the course. It's um, called the... Uh, The uh, multi time frame, multi lens analysis. And th th this is the best thing that I do every month in a formal way to appreciate where the market is and what all the key price levels are. And all I'm trying to do is understand the elephant in the center of our business from multiple perspectives. You know, we think the uh, in the military literature, you know, the, the elephant um, is really the indescribable force of nature that is war. You, you can't even put it in words and and a lot of times I feel like that's what the uh, that's what the market is like there's his tusks and although we can't fully understand the elephant or the market uh, we can begin to appreciate him like the six blind men who all touch different parts of him one of them felt the trunk and it was like a snake. And one of them felt the ear, it was like the leaf of a giant banana palm. And one felt his leg and it was like the trunk of a mighty tree. And one of them touched his side and it was like the wall of a sturdy building. None of them understood the elephant completely, but because they had language and they could integrate they were able to understand more about the elephant because of their coordination than any individual one of them. So there was a synergy and an integration that was built on teamwork and communication. And this is the idea of the multi-lens analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use five different perspectives to give me unique insights into the elephant and then I'm going to try to integrate them in such a way that when I overlay them somewhere in the center of this thing, this beautiful flower of an elephant market, I, I might learn something. And so the order that I go in uh, is this. I look at the MACD Four Seasons because that is a very simplified version uh, of the RLCO tactical screen that I use. So a simplified version 
uh, is the MACD, and I like starting there because it gets the broadest outlines first. And then I'm going to look at um, pinch and stretch. And all I'm looking at there is the uh, is the Bollinger bands. You know, where are they in the life cycle of the of the pinch and stretch? And I'm going to try to understand, you know, uh, moments of pure pinch. How pinched is that really when it pinched to its final one? Was it smaller than a frog box? Or was it less than a frog box? Or an ATR uh, on swings? Uh, or is it in a period of uh, expanding volatility where the distance between those two is getting larger? Or is it in a period of compression? So there's a moment of like tension, expansion, contraction, compression. So I want to know where in that life cycle of volatility is. I can also consult the volatility stats. Um, like the risk Z, um, or the uh, uh, market volatility, or the vol stat, to get a deeper insight into pinch and stretch. But again, what I'm looking for is extreme conditions, like I want to see extreme pinched or extreme expansion, uh, to highlight moments of turning points after big moves. I'm then going to look back at the regression line crossover Bollinger Band framework and I'm looking through looking for patterns that I recognize P1 through P7 that's the generation one. Really anymore I'm looking for generation two like owls hybrid frogs, collapsing or emerging dragons, Z3 pinches, super pinches, SSCs. Because each one of those leads to a very specific trade frame that allows me to calibrate reward and risk on that time frame in a way that is sensible. Uh, I'm going to look at regression line fractal framework in order to just understand where we are between the RL270 long-term fair value of price uh, of uh, buy and holders right versus the RL10 which is the trader's price you know the RL270 is the long-term buy and hold fair value I think of that as the mean that we're reverting to all the time. The, uh, the thing that where most of the money in the world is anchored to is the longest term buy and holders, fat cat, wealth, sovereign wealth funds and all that stuff. Big bank core positions. And so what I'm looking for in the regression line fractal framework is, uh, is the RL10 and the RL270 really close together? Is this a moment when uh, they agree that the long-term fair value is also equal to the current price? If that's true, then maybe it's just going to stay there forever, and it's just going to the traders are just going to move right along with the long-term fair value, and there's no trade or they're going to do a breakout and see how far they can move it away from the long-term fair value. And when it can no longer move away and it's starting to roll back up, well, we might have the ability to put a minimum manageable risk box on it in that time frame.
and determine if there's a call it three to one, call it your favorite requirement for reward to risk. Bigger is better. The bigger it is, the more likely this became a harsh winter, and the better I like it because now I can maybe get this trade in a couple legs. And I know that the wider that distance, maybe this trade happens in phases, and now I got to account for the fact that in the future there's a time decay slowly of the RL270. And then if I want to get fancy, I can put the RL90 on there as an intermediate checkpoint. And I can put the RL30 on there as the health of the market. And now what I have is a self-contained trade framing mechanism that is only looking at four lines plus some risk box, some risk reward box that is manageable on that time frame. So if I was working on the three minute or one minute, that MMRB might be the R10, or it might be the R6, or it might be a frog box if I was on 30 minute, or an hourly up to two hour. And it might be a range stat if it was daily charts. And it might be two ATRs if I was on weekly charts. So the minimum manageable risk box is associated with the time frame that you're using to evaluate the patterns. Check or hold? I want to make sure that we're clear on that. So I can look at the regression line fractal framework as a way to understand where I am in the life cycle of the regression lines and the four different demographics that they represent. You know, the RL10 represents the traders. The RL30 represents the wise old owl who's looking at the health of the trend that the traders are working with, the tactical trend. The RL270 represents the long-term buy and holders. And then the RL90 acts as an intermediate group that is faster than the old fogey buy and holders, but is it's a grandfather owl, if you will. Or if I went up a time frame, if I'm on one minute charts and I look at the 1030, I can also look on the same chart at the 3090 and I can see the relationship of the 3010 but on the three minute chart because it's the same thing. So if I'm on a one minute chart, the RL10 and the RL30 uh and then I'm on a three minute chart, the RL, yeah, RL 90. If this is my primary tactical view, you know, the blue line and the black line, so what I'm looking for on that one is, right, the RL 10 move down and then makes a reversal. And then the, out, uh, the RL30 is here. So if that's outside the river, then I have a P1. I have the regression line crossover. That pattern just happened. And then somewhere up in here is the middle of the river, which, you know, if I had, if that's the river, then this is, a P1 because I had a harsh move away from the river and now I have some distance that I can go to to get back to the Bollinger Band mean. So if I can put a wrist box on this anchored maybe to the bottom of the RL10 maybe I have a two or three to one trade just back to the 
Bollinger Band mean? Check or hold? Well, if that's what I'm looking for, if that's what I see on the one minute, and now I want to use a higher time frame, I want to look up. What if I wanted to go look at the three minute chart and see what the RL10 and the RL30 were doing? Well, I could shift the whole chart and look, or I could just look at the RL30 and RL90 on the one minute chart where the RL30 is tells me what the RL10 is doing on the three minute chart. And the RL90 on a one minute chart shows me what the RL30 on the three minute chart is. And then if I went out to nine minutes or 10 minutes, then the 90 to 70 represents the the RL10 and the RL30 relationship on the one minute chart. So I could go up 10, a full 10 factor, and just on that one chart, by looking at the RL10, 30, 90, and 270, I can see what the other time frames are looking at on one chart, and I can get a feel for what's going on. Like, for example, on the Z3 pinch or the super pinch, if I've got a frog box intraday, and maybe I'm on three-minute charts, maybe I'm on one-minute chart, doesn't matter, either one. If I've got a frog box there, and the Z3 lines are inside of the frog box, then I know that I have a Z3 pinch because this has compressed so much that it can all be contained inside one frog box. That thing is ready to explode. That's useful. But if it doesn't explode and it just keeps going sideways, by definition, the RL10 is going to be inside there, quiet. The RL30 is inside there. And now maybe the RL90, which may have been down here, comes up and joins. And then when the RL270 joins, sorry, that should be purple. Now what I have is not only the, the Bollinger Band volatility has compressed inside that box, but all four time frames all agree that this is the fair price. That's like a giant acorn just ready to explode from this super pinch, or a, the most tightly coiled spring you could ever imagine. Uh, and as soon as that thing starts going, it could go for a long time. How far could it go? Well, what I can do is I can go back to the regression line fractal framework and I can take a look at every excursion I can go back and look at every excursion from the 270 that the traders ever made so this time they did this so it went that far and then the next time it went that far and then this far and then that far and then this far and then that far and we know that it will also go on the other side as well so what I am now measuring is the, is the strength of the traders to be able to move price away from the long-term buy and holders. I should know what that is. I should know what the average move looks like uh, over the last 30 excursions. How far did it go? Find the average. So now the next time that I'm in a little Z3 pinch, or better yet, inside a super pinch, and I'm wondering how far can that go? Hey, would I be dumb to say it might go an average? No, I would not be dumb to do that. So I can use the higher time frames of the RLFF, but just by looking backwards 
I can see, hey, where are the turning points? And how far did it move before it turned? And I can start bringing those forward to find the absolute price levels where the turning points occurred. Because those are going to be significant. Because the traders couldn't take it any further than that. Or that's where the long-term buy and holders uh, decided to change their mind. So in the COVID, if the RL270 only got that far, but the, uh, the R10 got that far, and then it couldn't get any further, and then this thing started chunking its way along here, like it did. Uh, that's a significant piece of information. This is a significant piece of information. Like, you could go back and say, even from the peak of COVID, and it fell that far that fast for the traders, the long-term buy and holders only revised their downward estimate of the fair value of it to here. That's going to be a pretty strong support level forever and ever. Check or hold. I can also say, how far... Did this thing actually move on a percentage basis? Hey, once the fear once the fear is gone, how far above could they take it? Well, if they were as greedy as they were fearful, I'm not allowed to be surprised if that thing goes that far above the 270 because that's how far it got below the 270. So I can now, at these turning points, if I can put a risk box on there and say, look, there's a one, two, three, four, I don't know how long it's going to take to do that. But the RL10 is going to move faster than the 270 decays. So somewhere out in here, I'm going to have some kind of meeting engagement once more where the price and the RL270 join forces again. And if this was the overreaction in one direction, I can say, how far above did it go here? Well, maybe it goes that far. So by using the different lookbacks, of these different time frames and these different lenses, I can now start calibrating trade frames and price actions through different lenses and start to appreciate where the market actually is. And maybe I can just frame some, I don't, I don't really understand the market, but I can describe it and appreciate it a little more. And when you do this, you will never have a directional bias in your life again. You, it forces you to see it in multiple ways. Oh, so now finally, after I've done the RLFF, I can now do, I can finish up with support and resistance. So the question was, how do I use the 30-minute and the daily time frames to guide my trading on the three-minute time frame? in the same way that I can use monthly, weekly, and two-hour. So I know that if this was a daily chart, and here was the live, here was the trade from yesterday. It opened, it did this, and it closed here. I know that what I have is a, is a five-day down pattern. So just by looking at this, I have a 5DD. Let's say the closes were here just for grins. So here's this is a lower close, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now I have a 5DD pattern. That's information that I can use to shape the trick. Let's say this thing is going to open right where it closed and there's no gap. See the last... Uh, Q&A about the gap stat and why we care about that. 
about finding the movers. I'm not going to repeat all that. But if that's where the open is, what I can already do is I, I know from the open that the maximum reasonable intraday move in both directions is going to be what? It's a plus range stat and a minus range stat. So I'm actually using the daily time frame to guide my trading because I know that that's what my upper and lower reasonable price targets are. And I know from the daily time frame that the, the standard deviation of the last 30 ranges is equal to the frog box. And if my frog quality number is three, then I know that from the open, there's actually four frog boxes available to the range stat because that's the mathematical definition. And I also know that if I took the range stat and cut it into 10 slices, the R10 is one tenth of that range stat. So now I know, based on the daily time frame, that if I can manage an R10, then I have nine potential reward boxes to the upside. So now I can start calibrating. I know that from statistics. But I also know from the daily chart that if, this, if it opens here, but if it breaks out above yesterday's high, that is significant information because that is the green zone. So if price can get from here through this level, that's significant. It's in the green zone because it now just got to a price that it couldn't get to yesterday. Check or hold. That means that buyers with money came in and are now pushing this thing higher than they could get to yesterday. And I know from the stats on the 5DD that if this thing breaks out, there's a good chance of a 5 to 8% gain in the next three to five days. So I can use the daily time frame and almost the weekly time frame. The swing time frame comes in and gives me information about the 5DD that says, you know what, you better pay attention to yesterday's high of the day and yesterday's low of the day because that is going to be the yellow zone. Inside the yellow zone, I'm allowed to take trades intraday if and only if I can frame a two-to-one trade using intraday statistics. But until it breaks out of yesterday's range, I have no information that tells me that it can. Mike, the most recent information was that it can't until it does, and then it did. And then if it breaks down below yesterday's low of the day, now suddenly I'm into the red zone. And that's really good. Because now that means the sellers are coming in and, and hitting it hard and the buyers are not showing up. In fact, that's really good because the, the 5DDF means instead of working, it failed. I don't care if it went through this and then failed or if it just opened and then just went straight to failure. I would prefer that because now I can trade the 5DDF to the downside and maybe we're going to have a 6DD all the way down to a 10DD. 
And if we are in a bull sideways or bear, but if we're in a bear and I get a 5DDF, I can bet you I'm trading that one to the short side. So now I'm using market condition and daily time frame to establish crucial time or uh, price levels that give me very clear guidance on what to do and what direction to be in. So now if I have swing trade patterns like 5DD and washout and triple screen and 551W and channeling and overreaction, my six reliable mechanical swing trades, every one of those is providing information about my prospective targets that gives me the ability to use the daily high and low as a mechanical entry and a reason to get in. I can use the size I use the size of the daily range to help me figure out where those uh, what my daily risk my mechanical daily risk might be. So if I take the daily range here and then I put a little five cent buffer on it. That's my mechanical risk or range risk. I use the range risk to determine the size of the maximum adverse move that I could tolerate. And then I use the 10 day high. as the price target, like if this thing sold off on the 5DD I, and it gets back to the 10-day high, that's a perfect swing trade. You know, the th especially in a bull market. Oh, I just knocked my cable out right there, sorry. If the 10-day high was here and that thing was cruising up that way and then gave me a five-day down, and then I can frame that trade like this with the mechanical entry in both directions and call that the range risk or the yellow zone, and that's the range risk and then I can count and say, oh, there's four to one on a retest of the 10-day high. I'll take that entry all the time, especially if it opens here and then sells off to, oh, a fail stat. Now I can use the statistics that come from the daily charts. Like how far on average did it fall from the open to the low of the day before it then went up and then found the high of the day and then closed. So I want to know what is the average fail. So now at the open, if it sells off that much and then starts to reverse, and it moved a fail stat from the open, and now my MMRB is this, and I know that my range stat is that, I could just hold my nose and buy that, knowing that if it fails below here, I'm going to be short on a failure pattern, because now whatever was making it fail is making it fail more. I'm not allowed to be surprised by that, but I have enough information here that I could actually maybe see that because I have a 5DD pattern in a bull market that says that might work. Check or hold? Yeah. So this is the S&P on a three-minute chart from Friday.
and now my my pen is not working. Come on. There we go. All right, so this was the, uh, yeah, that was the close. And that was the open. There was a slight open. So from the open, I can take a range stat. That's how big the range stat is. And that means this thing could have gone. I didn't intentionally do that, but it actually lined up pretty well. <laughs> it could, I know from the open, it can go that far. Uh, instead, it went this this far. And then it gave me a high and a lower high. And maybe I could go Collapsing Dragon because there's a PSAR flip. And here's the R10. I might have been able to get short right here. And if I do, I'm not going to lose money on that trade. And when it gets here, it reversed almost exactly where it, it found support before. And I can come over here and just say, look, that's a support level. So I can use information from the previous day to give me good information. So if I'm taking this trade and I can see those, I can say, well, maybe that's leg one. And then maybe that's leg two. And maybe that's leg three. And my risk is probably only this. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Almost perfectly calibrated to the range stat. Check or hold. I could also, I, I don't have it on this chart, of course, but this was the size of yesterday's move from the high of the day to the low of the day. That's not exactly where the prices were, but that's how far it moved from open to low to high to close. That's what, you know, if it was a perfect doji, it would have been like that. That's how far, it was a uh, $3 move. This one is $4.80. The daily range risk was $3. This is the frog box, which is a buck thirty, And this is the R10, which happens to be $0.50. Cents. Now, today, because of statistics, there's about 2.5 or 2.6 R10 boxes inside a single frog box. So that usually hovers between two and three. The point I want to make is that the whenever I have the, these price levels, from any of those lenses, uh, I can pull those over and just say, look, key price level, key price level, key price level. And now what I have is I, I can construct a price ladder from where it opened. And so if, if yesterday's bar looked like this and it gapped down to here, I can just I can just draw this line across and say yeah here's my uh, here's my range stats here's my yellow zone and I'm allowed to trade inside the yellow zone as long as I can see two to one so what am I using as my risk Maybe it's the R10. Maybe it's a frog box. Maybe it's just you're using the PSAR flip. You know, pick one 
it opened, and I can say, well, right from the open, I can say, well, here's the, here's the fail stat, and here's the low of the day. So now I can look at this thing and say, okay, excellent. You gapped down, and you're selling off. Hey, you started to turn before you even got to a fail stat. That's good. That makes me believe that it's going to do that. Oh, you went exactly to the fail stat, and then you started to go, okay, well, that's average. Hey, you went past a fail stat, and now you are approaching the low, yesterday's low of the day. Do you know how excited I am to put that trade on? Very excited. In a disinterested sort of way. Because now I can come back to, uh, I can use all the other information that was available. What? Hey, where was the last time that this thing, uh, PSR flipped? You know, it had done this, and then the PSR flip way back when on dailies was here. So there's my no kidding, you know, RL10 collapsing dragon from the daily chart is at that price level. So I'll draw that one as a big fat red line. But now I can, you asked me about the 30 minute. I can now take the, I can use the 30 minute bars and say, where are the, uh, where were the R10 turning points on that one? Maybe the collapsing dragon on the 30 minute bar is there. And maybe on the daily bar, it's over here. And so this thing opened right here, and here was the fail stat. And now this thing starts failing. It hits the 30-minute collapsing dragon. So I can just put a collapsing dragon trade on the basis of the 30-minute chart. Done. And with some reasonable, appropriate risk box. Done. And now this thing is going this way. Maybe it's to our battle drill to here, and I can put a second position on before it even gets to the daily break. Oh, that would be awesome. Because then if it goes through the daily break, the low of the day, that might have been the PSR flip. This might have been the low of the day from yesterday. So I got all of these different price levels that tell me it's like, it's like barriers of support. Every time that breaks, it tells you that the buyers are getting weaker and the sellers are getting stronger until one of them holds. And maybe these guys are just tired and satisfied, and now the big boys are coming in hungry because the size of the fail makes this a new value play. I'm buying at a much better price. The very success of the seller encourages more and more buyers to come in until they reach a natural equilibrium point, which is the point of that discussion about the how far did the traders ever take it from the 270 and know what those statistics are and just go back and take a look at them. So now when I... Um, So I so these these the size of these boxes here are coming from the daily right and from yesterday I'm getting this information like if that had broken here that was going to be huge it could go as far as a range stat but it didn't okay so that's information uh, Jeff has to be on in about six minutes, so we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna wind up by saying, look, the um, if I go to uh, a monthly chart, I'm just gonna go back that far. That's about uh, to the start of 2001. Uh, I'm going to put on a let's see you know edit that rascal I'm going to make that a 
big fat support level on a monthly chart at the base of the RL10. Check or hold. If it fails below 370, look out below. And the dragon, belly of the dragon. And if you want to, because you believe in it, the absolute price level. Check. And to the upside, dragon. RL10, previous peak. So if I'm on a intraday chart, and I see that the monthly dragon breaks, that just tells me something significant from that higher time frame. So now if I go to the uh, weekly, that thing's already well established. There's no new information from the weekly. But it's interesting to notice that on the weekly, the peak of the dragon here was the previous peak of the RL10. That's kind of interesting. I don't know what it means. But that tells you that 470 is a pretty damn important number. And we're at 449, 450. There's 20 bucks from the top of the most recent high to 470. 20 bucks on 450. So that's 4%. Or 5% gain. Daily. Uh, let's see. <laughs> you see why I put those two on? Yeah. Low of the day. Uh, this one is really good because that's also like the skin of the dragon. So that one's even better. That one is so strong that if it breaks below whatever that price level is, you better be just ready for all hell to break loose. And then if this one breaks, you better be ready there. All right. Two hour. Check. Thirty minute. I'm going to put that one. Just because after this gap, that was the low of that series. And then this great big uh, space here is going to be seen as a uh, free fire zone. So if that price, if that if that price were to break below 445, it's going to cover, it's going to cross that yellow zone, pretty darn quick. I'm going to move, I'm going to nudge that one up to that low of the day. Now when I get on the three minute bars, those are some key price levels. I'm going to add, I'm going to add this one. Uh, I'm going to add one uh, right here just because that's like a, another gap. 
So I'll tell you right now, four forty eight fifty, four forty eight. Oh, that's fifty cents. You know what fifty cents is? An R ten. I guarantee you that if it breaks below 448, I'm short with that much risk. And if it breaks through each of those next two red lines, I'm adding a position. And uh, and then I'll have three positions short in the middle of this gap, which is all the way down into here. So by knowing the high and the low of the day, Uh, I could I could have what I should have is if I do the same thing on the on the green bars, you know I would have had all this stuff drawn into. But the risk box is the one I really want you to see. So that's how you use that. Now, what you should do is go to SPY and go out to the monthly chart, and then use this lens. And pull up the pull up the charts with the appropriate indicators on, and take a look at what's the MACD telling me, pinch and stretch. So you got to have the Z3 lines on there. RLCO patterns that I can see. What's the regression line fractal framework telling me? Support resistance. So when I look at, uh, let's see, where's uh, I can go with. Uh, There's my lens for monthly. That's monthly. Um, RLFF. This was where the peak of the R10 got to on COVID. There's a kata two when it crosses the 90. That's where the 90 turned. And when the 10 crossed and it broke above the previous hump, that was the strongest signal you ever saw at 154. It's at 450 right now. That's a 300% move. Oh, that's not COVID. That was the uh, a long-term, that was the uh, financial crisis, long-term capital management, the housing bubble. You want to see where COVID was? That's COVID. It barely even registers. That's how bad. <laughs> that's how bad it was with long-term capital management. That's how bad the internet bubble break was. Now, on a percentage basis, that was horrible. In terms of magnitude, that's how bad long-term capital management was that COVID barely registers. So everything is sort of relative. So where are me, Where am I now on the monthly? Well, the, do you think the guys were, do you think the long-term, the long-term buy and holders were scared? Nope. That's what the, now if I go to, now if I adjust that to weekly, sorry, weekly, This is COVID back in here. Daily. That's what COVID, I think, uh, there's COVID right there, that big yellow box. That was COVID. So now notice how useful You get the extreme excursion of the RL10. Then it, there's an RLCO right there, a P1. Here's where it finally crossed the 90, and that's where the 90 turned. And here's where it crossed the 270, and that's where the 90 crossed the 270. That was good times. And that makes this little Kata 2 signal great, and that makes this, that makes this signal at 337 for an emerging dragon, officially the end of COVID.
But look, it took five times as long to recover the distance that it took to lose the distance. Check. And now, if we took this box, that was from the peak of the RL10 to the belly of the RL10. So now when this thing is looking good, I can now bring that over and say, here's where it turned. And now I'm going to project forward. This is how far it could go above the RL270. Now this is going to just scare the living crap out of you. You know what that price at the red line is? 449.50. That is predicted by the size of the adverse move below the 270. Up, oh, sorry. Let me clean this up a little bit. Oh, to the price above the 270. We're going to pull that down just a little bit. 440. So this move was entirely in keeping with the RLFF tradition. And it hasn't done shit since then. It's pulled halfway back. So now I could go to here and say, how far did this fall from here down to here that far? How far when it crosses again from where from the belly? It could go that far. So anyway, you use the RLFF to start projecting and all that. So that's how, in a nutshell, we can use all these different frames of reference to... Um, uh, to inform the intraday trading on the three minute time frame. Know where all those prices are, know where their statistics come from. You have a lot of little building templates. Struct think of those as concrete forms and structural templates and pre prefabricated modules that you can use to start constructing the decision the house of decision making that you have okay that's everything I wanted to cover there I want I need to shut this down and start it up so Jeff can come in you're gonna really like his uh, presentation for creativity 202 so let me get this closed and uh, and I'll be back here in about two minutes. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. Did that answer the questions? Hopefully, I think it probably did. <laughs>